Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including a miraculous ladybug, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Hey, y'all. And April Collins. Hello. It is a rare and special occasion, as today is a new episode of Miraculous Ladybug Season 2. San- yeah, Woo-hoo. Sandboy um, aired today in Canada. Uh, the English dub we watched and we'll be getting into today, much like every episode of Season 2 we cover here at the Overly Animated Podcast. Find us at OverlyAnimated.com, on iTunes, OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes, or on our YouTube at YouTube.com slash OverlyAnimated. Um, make sure you have seen this episode, Sandboy, big spoilers, actually a lot going on here. So check the, make sure you check this out before you uh, keep, continue listening. Spoilers for Sandboy and all of, uh, previous episodes of season two of Miraculous Ladybug. Uh, okay. This is, this was quite the interesting episode, Delaney. Are there coherent spoilers? <laughs> like, I don't know if there's something we're going to say. Oh, we'll break it all down. We'll fi- be like, <gasps> look. We'll figure it out. We'll to get our, okay. by our, by our powers three combined. We can understand oh, what's actually this. happening in okay. this episode with our magical powers. We'll yeah. Okay. Ignite. Yeah. Del- <laughs> figure it out. Okay, Delaney. What did you think of Sandboy? So, I I really like this episode. I think okay. So like sometimes you watch Ladybug and you get really caught up and you're like, oh, it's gonna happen this time. They're gonna get the miraculous. <laughs> and like you know, you know, you know, deep down in your soul, it's not gonna happen. But today, like, I got caught up in it, and though, granted, the entire time this time, I was like, glad well, nothing's going to happen, but I'm excited to see where we go. So, I was, it was a super interesting episode. We had, like, a solid chunk of time where, like, who cares about Marinette and Adrian? It's like, here's Tiki and Plog, like, talking and whatever they're doing. Like, I don't know if it's flirting or <laughs> what. <laughs> <laughs> So I think this was a really, in- it was an interestingly, like, structured episode. Like, we we didn't actually see the accumulatization, mm-hmm. which is something that, like, never happens. Yeah. And so that was really cool. And overall, I just, I really enjoyed the episode. Um, uh, Hot Moth sucks. He is rude. <laughs> How dare you? I just, like, why are you, I can't what? Leave. Oh, all he did was akumatize and ch- <laughs> a child having a nightmare, Delaney. Then. Whoa, because that's really new for him. That's <laughs> I mean, cool. I like, oh, okay. I mean, Oh, that doesn't even shock me. Like, I'm like, whatever. Like, he acclimatized a literal baby. Like, this is... <laughs> it's true. Fine. I'm just like, whatever. But we, when he, like, silenced Nuru, I was like, you were the worst person <laughs> to ever exist. But no, when I was like, whatever. It's a kid. I'm not shocked. Because we've already decided Hot Mouth will go... If Hot Mouth will call his own employee, just require... <laughs> okay, and are, then we're already back into that? <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're always in that, but I really enjoyed the episode, and I really, like, <laughs> I like how we just, like, threw in, oh, yeah, uh, oh, you can't talk to them in their magical world. Thank you for telling me what it is after we looked at it for five minutes, and I'm like, this is really cool. They're just hanging in out there, and they're doing the really weird Kwame ritual where they just go, ah, for, like, 30 seconds. It's cool. Um, no, I, I did, I really enjoyed the episode. I think there was some interesting stuff. I do have to say that, like, I, like, got, like, a little, like, skipped ahead, like, a little ahead of the episode. And so before I knew it was happening, all I saw was Marinette and Adrian. And I, because I didn't know yet that it was, like, a nightmare. I obviously knew it wasn't real, but I was like, what the heck is going on? And so I really, creepy, like, nightmare Adrian was, was solid. Like, when he, like, twists his head and he doesn't blink, it's, like, horrific. Like, this is, like, high quality horror. And then... This was good stuff. And then I really also enjoyed Anime Sword, uh, Evil Ladybug. That yes. was, that yes. was like <laughs> out of Ruby. Like, here's this giant sword. Just everything. I really enjoyed this episode. I also enjoyed the villain's design. And we're obviously going to talk about all the adorable Kwamis and the really creepy Viper Kwami, who I'm pretty sure is evil for no reason. His other name than is Viper. Sass. Is sass yeah. <laughs> he's a snake and he sounds so <laughs> creepy. And then, oh, okay, we're going to talk about the truth bomb that I had to tell my girlfriend about immediately because she didn't get to watch the episode with me. And I was like, I have to tell you what happened in the episode. So they're like, oh, yeah, we haven't seen the peacock in a while. And I'm like, is she dead? Like, do you know? <laughs> like, people who just dropped that, like, would they know if they're dead? And they're like, we can only communicate on our birthdays because that makes sense. And I'm just, do you, do you, would you know? So I'm like, she's alive, which means Adrian's mom is probably alive, unless Kwamis can't die. I'm really not sure how this stuff works. Okay, yeah, we'll get we'll get into that. Yeah. They seem to not know. Yeah, but a good episode. I really enjoyed it. It was weird, but 
I think plot, not that Plog and Tiki can really carry an episode, but they did okay. Okay, they did. They did okay. That's <laughs> did high okay. praise. High praise for Tiki for uh, for us. On I old think. Note, and Tiki, when like Marinette kissed Tiki's face, I was like, "This isn't okay. Don't do that." She doesn't. <laughs> well, she was like, "I trust you, Tiki," and I was like, "Alarm! Alarm! Alarm!" <laughs> like, don't trust her. She's this terrifying otherworldly being. She can probably eat you. I trust you, Plog. I'm like, Plog just lies to everyone. That's all he did. This whole episode was lying. There's uh, yeah, there's some interesting uh, <laughs> tiki tiki stuff going on. We'll it's get into fine. all this. Okay, okay. Delaney uh, seems weirded out, but uh, overall, okay, <laughs> overall, I'm like cool the episode. I'm weirded out, but I'm cool with it. Yes, April. What did you think of Samboy? Okay, this episode was truly a gift from <laughs> above. Because who, who is, who is it a gift from? Hawk Moth? Did he get the gift yes. us this episode? <laughs> who is he it gave a gift us this episode? To, is it just to you? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did Sass gift, gift us this episode? Yes. Uh, Master Fu did. Okay. Um, because he fell asleep. First off, he fell asleep with a book on his face. Who does that? <laughs> like, it's, it's like a med- meditation for dummies or something. Like, yes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I get like, wait, first off. Okay. We're not even going to go into that. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, this episode was true. Again, this was a gift because all that it was missing was like space dumpsters and it would have been even better. Yeah. But um, creepy Adrian was my favorite or nightmare Adrian. And he was, like, crawling around on the ground and stuff. And then, like, at some point, he's, like, T-Rexing in the streets and, like, just going, like, Marinette. Yeah, I'm the in creeper. The creeper. Yeah. <laughs> he's, the and creep. All he, That's what it's called. The creep. The creep. Oh, is that what it is? Because I thought he was, like, T-Rexing because he had his arms kind of up like a T-Rex does. Uh, and he's like walking around <laughs> but that's besides the point because he was tr- he was wonderful um and he was just following her around even after like she transformed into ladybug she- he was still following her a- also that sucks for them because they had like two nightmares come after them more or less because adrian was stuck in the cage and then when he transformed into cat he had uh like i guess hateful ladybug uh evil ladybug like also hate him and then marinette had to so or ladybug had to so that that's no good um the kwamis are extremely creepy and i i did not appreciate Ooh, a marker <laughs> <laughs> they're like I the aliens like, in toy story they like were so hyped for that marker um i don't I was like, it's just like a. It looked like a highlighter, so it wasn't even like a a marker. It was a highlighter. It's a paintbrush. You actually, it's not true, but yeah. you tried. You, you were you were close. You were so close. You were really close. Like, <laughs> and it's also like these poor Kwamis never get to leave. A okay. gift from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like it's like they're in prison, their own magical <laughs> prison. <laughs> And then Plog can't even be bothered to actually bring them something. <laughs> he ate the cheese. First of all, t- t- Tiki just grabs some the first thing she sees in the room. She doesn't even, <laughs> and that's not even that. She didn't bad, even but ask. <laughs> I was, I, I was waiting for Meredith to be like, "Where's my highlighter?" Like, <laughs> okay. To be fair, we all know she has like nine thousand markers, yeah, so it doesn't true. really matter. But that's like what? Yes. Okay. No. April, continue. Oh no. Okay. Um. Also, I had a really strange thought because uh, Tiki and Plog were kind of like flirting with each other. And it was very similar to that of like Mm. Ladybug and Cat. And I was like, I wonder if like this is something like this is an adverse effect of like whenever they transform. And so maybe Adrian's just confused because he's Don't invalidate Adrian's feelings (laughs) for Ladybug. What are you doing? What are you doing? That was all a lie. I'm just saying. This isn't okay. I'm upset now. <laughs> also, okay, so then my oh, other... Has the boy not struggled enough? <laughs> Is he not struggled? It's bad enough he gets locked in his room, literally. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no. Also, Hawkmoth was a precious gem in this episode because he not only transformed another kid, um, but we found out that his cute little pendant lights up, so yes. that's adorable. <laughs> When there's a strong feeling, that is weird. <laughs> right? That is just weird. Like, yeah. what? 
what I he's just like I all of us it like lights up and he goes a strong emotion change of plans and i'm like whoa well, and I'm he- like, what is the like what is the not bad version of this? Like, if you're not Hawk Moth, what does this do? It's <laughs> a good. It's a good question. What is what is that Kwame like, supposed to really do? Yeah. If you're not I think was okay. I had a I had a really strange theory about that, um, and that it's uh, like it maybe his miraculous is meant to like it senses negative emotions so that it could seek them out and go turn them into positive emotions. Mm. But I like this. He, it sounds good. Okay, yeah. So uh, that was my thought process at some point during. Naturally, the Hawk Moth would like twist it into something it, horrific. Exactly, because who but Hawk Moth? Um, my favorite moment of him, though, is that at the end of the episode when he just screams no. Yes. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, could you be more dramatic right now, friend? Um, and then he was extremely creepy at the, or Gabriel, Gabriel was very, very creepy the entire episode. Yes. And I, like, he took away Nuru's mouth. Like, what is wrong with you? And like, it's always a very uncomfortable, like, shot of his face. Yeah. And it's like the, it's like the very, like, full frontal shot of his face and, like, almost kind of like you're looking down and you can see his mouth go up into the smile and you're like, that's not cute. Stop it. It's <laughs> like, not cute. Stop. someone needs to tre- teach you how to take a selfie. Uh, but no, I was very, I was very hype on this episode. I had a lot of uh, laugh out loud moments and there's a lot of really good quotes in here. <laughs> LOL, LOL moments. Yeah, I feel like both of you talked for like a long time without really saying anything. Qual- qual- like uh, whether you liked the episode or not, there's a lot of like, oh, this is this was a meme from the episode. <laughs> I guess that's what our podcast is. But this is, this is especially. I'm pretty sure that's that's what our that's especially like our, so. That's oh, our brand. Is, yeah. That's our brand. Yeah, yeah. I like the comparison of the Kwamis to the uh, alien toys in Toy Story. Yeah, I agree with that. And, that and then what? It, my other comment was, what is what really is the difference between a highlighter and a yellow marker when you think about it the but, highlighter is oh you're not wrong wow okay so well, that's no, a, i mean yellow markers <laughs> like, that's the philosophical question we'll we'll get back no, to that yellow markers don't bleed <laughs> no i had to have a class on what markers are made out of because of forensics there is a difference you, you, did, you, of, <laughs> you did not have a whole class on what markers are made out of i literally i know how all sorts of things are made promise <laughs> <laughs> like you, you had a, you had a how to show Oh, yeah. I know what plastic bag, bags, plastic bags, plastic bags are made out of. How to make plastic? Ba- it's literally how it's made. Okay, yes. okay, this is off topic. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Okay, over 15, yeah, uh, my, my thoughts on the episode. Um, Sandboy is fantastic. Um, maybe this is a hot take, but I am absolutely in love with this episode. Like, I don't think it's hot take. I think we're no, all, like, I also it's... loved this episode. I, I told I've you, still... all I was missing was the space dumpsters. Space dumpsters, that's all I was missing. Look, I've seen some people down on this one, so I'm going to convince you why this is potentially the best episode of the show. Like, I think this yeah. might be the best episode of Ladybug. It has everything. <laughs> it has... <laughs> No, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, except space. I'm not gonna list all the meme stuff, but it, it has everything. But just the the uh, the narrative format of this episode is fascinating and incredibly refreshing for the show. Um, this is like this episode really cements the season as just being incredibly innovative on the season one format that that we threw out. We've just. We've done so much with it, and this episode has done the most with it. Like, we see, we, the biggest thing is that we see multiple characters' perspective that we, like, never see in this episode. We have a whole scene from Hawkmoth's perspective, which we've had a little bit before, but we see him, like, go from Gabriel to Hawkmoth, and it's fantastic. We have entire scenes of Tiki and Plog from their perspective. We see their interactions. We see, like, this Plog action sequence. Um, it's, and it's really good. I think this is Tiki's best episode by far. Um, this is like her at her most sympathetic. I was not scared of her. She was she, <laughs> shocking and <laughs> creepy. It's because, and we draw this direct parallel, as mentioned, between Tiki and Plog and, uh, Ladybug and Cat, and it's really successful, I think. Um, and it, it's, it may, it really humanizes both of them. Um, the, uh, the, the, everything we do with nightmares is incredible characterization for everyone. I think that's some of the most successful across the board character moments. Um, not seeing the kid get akumatized and him not being someone we knew is absurdly refreshing. Um, for once, it is not a character on the show. There's another person in Paris that we do not know <laughs> who can get akumatized. Also, we discover, like, it's like we get to experience it yes. like everyone else for the first time. Like, because usually it's like people are just living their life and they're like, what? 
the heck is going on? And they're like, oh, it's an akumatized villain. But we get to actually experience that instead of watching some stranger. It's like when we met Pigeon Man. It's like, I don't care who Pigeon, Pigeon Man is. Pigeon Man. Okay. Pigeon Man. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's a great – I think the show should do this more often. It's just yeah, bring no, us – Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, it, it's especially like just having having had like 40-plus episodes of always seeing the buildup of the person getting akumatized. And then at the end, I, they were just like – I'm just, he was like, yeah, I just had a bad dream. It yeah, like, that's it. Thank you yeah. for telling me. Like, good. Everything's great. I know why you're akumatized. I know Hawkmoth sucks because he akumatized a poor child who had a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah. But also, I, I will admit, though, that I did have a moment whenever I was watching the, the first time that I watched this episode, because I was like, wait, did I miss something? Like, who's who got a who's getting akumatized right, right you're now? you're expecting like, it the whole time. You're like, exactly. Like, I legit thought like I like scrubbed back through the video and was just like, did I like skip over it? Like, what happened? Did I like black out or something? Well, it's good, too, because like even though you watch Ladybug and you're always anticipating someone being akumatized. They literally were like, well, we'll just have someone on the lookout in case someone gets akumatized. You're like, okay, this is happening like, real fast. <laughs> well, so I know I think, what's going to happen. Right. So I think it's really good. Like, it was a really good use of, like, because that wasn't the focus, focus of the episode, which it generally, like, that's what's so great about season two. But I think I agree. I agree with you, Dylan. Like, this is really is the, like, summation of that. And this is really, like, one of the greatest examples of what they're doing in season two is, like, we still have the very episodic, like, we have a villain and we fixed it at the end of the episode, but we have, we're still introducing new mythology and plot elements in these episodes. Mm. And it's not quite continuous yet among all the episodes. They're getting really close, but we're still having like plot stuff happen and like introducing and we're learning things, but it's still the same episodic thing, which is like the evolution that we're getting. And that's really great. And so here it's like, it's not the focus of the episode. It's like this weird Kwame meeting. And it's, it's really like, they do a really good job of it. Like, like it's like, well, we don't need to see them get akumatized. We need to have Plog and uh, Tiki yeah. like have their weird conversation. Yeah, which we'll break down in depth. Um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, I agree with all of that. And uh, like the, it's a great evolution. What we see this, these, all these uh, Kwamis, and like I think most things that happen with the Kwamis or that they say are not new information. There's definitely some new information here. Um, like the thing with the peacock. Like we we knew peacock was along with the Hawk Mots Miraculous were the two that were stolen. Master Fu references it. His nightmare here. Um, there he like those are the two he lost. And so, <laughs> the ghost. The ghost. Yeah. None of none of none of his nightmare was new information but it like it all comes together really well and there's just enough new stuff that i think is um and way more than tip- typically on the show um and that all in the in the in a uniquely structured episode um yeah just really really successful with um not seeing him getting akumatized this is a really subversive episode of the ladybug format all of what i just said also we have incredible subversions of the lucky charm mechanic um this is oh my god she, oh, they yeah. one-shotted it and i was like what it just happened <laughs> the lucky they the, it's it's there's not only do we subvert lucky charm once we do it like three times in a row um we, we she's just she's she goes into her transformation sequence for lucky charm and gets hit during it which is my favorite thing people do going into a transformation sequence and then getting disrupted by the villain which because of course that should happen more often um and like so she doesn't actually get lucky charm and then she's still able to use her ladybug vision even though she's not using lucky she's charm a dumb dumb. because yeah. this this is the fine well, this is the this episode is the final say marinette doesn't need her powers yeah. to do ladybug vision this is just a representation of her I, thinking also I say, like, I, thought, I was just about to say wasn't like the ladybug vision just like uh, uh, like them showing us her thought process yes, yes, kind so of thing. This, okay, so this is the clearest depiction we've gotten of that in the show, which was very successful. It was unclear like previously. Yeah, and the, and mm-hmm. she and she, she you know she's she, she uh, defeats even though she doesn't have a lucky charm. Um, it's well, just same based- even like during the process of like making her lose her powers, he even like made a joke like, "Oh, you're you're like." He, I, I don't remember the exact line, but he said something like, "Oh, you're like you don't have your your toy, you don't have your." You didn't get your gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, yeah, she, there's, there's nothing. And that she throws up the thing. She didn't, you know, she didn't get a, a, a lucky charm thing. She throws up the sword top, which very confusing, by the way. I'll, I'll explain uh, what happened with the yeah, lucky charm. Yeah, that was weird. It's, no, I, 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 I had to watch I think it several I kind times. Kind of understood it. Um, she, th- <laughs> she throws up the sword top, and that's not what she lucky charms. It's just the result of her thinking. Um, so she doesn't need to throw up the thing that got, uh, that got lucky charmed in order well, to miraculous ladybug, I guess. Well, um, I, I took it as because it was evil. It was evil ladybug's lucky charm. And yeah, so maybe it, maybe it also applies because of a lucky, a lucky charm. charm. <laughs> that is possible. Yeah, and that's the third thing. The third way we subvert lucky charm is the the evil ladybug clone does lucky charm, <laughs> and she just pulls out a giant sword. 
It was oh, something useful for once. It was wow. so good. It looked like something straight out of like Kingdom Hearts. Or <laughs> I don't so even good. know. It was so absurdly large. It was so great. That might be my favorite. It was favorite very thing. detailed. It like, was so good. Like all these useless lucky charms. Like, what does this do? And then <laughs> she just pulls out the most. <laughs> like, it'll be like, oh, here's a, a giant teapot. weapon. It'll be like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this. How do we get more swords? Why can't she do it? And it's like, oh, (laughs) here's a rock. I think throwing a rock at some point would be much more convenient than half the stuff they get. Yes, and it's it's, it's such a brilliant subversion of that. And um, yeah, all of that... Plus, uh, we have, this is an incredible Lady Noir episode, um, Cat and Ladybug in their ca- superhero forms. Maybe the best Lady Noir episode ever, dare I say. Um, their moment at the end, um, I think, is really fantastic. And this is, like, a dynamic we're not, like, fully in love with because of, like, you know, Cat being, like, super forward and stuff. But I think, like, Cat is forward in this episode, and it really sells it way better than the show ever has previously. I think it's really endearing. This up, That's up for debate. We'll, we'll discuss. And then... Um, and then also everything with the the Kwame uh, the, the Kwame world, all the exposition we get, um, everything we learn about them, um, just there's so much here. Um, I think like top to bottom, it, it might be it might be the best episode of the show just because of how much incredible stu- uh, stuff there is. Um, and like yeah, let's 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 dive in because uh, we've we've referenced a lot of it already, including nonsense like the highlighter, which is not relevant. But um, <laughs> let's let's go over everything we learn about the Kwamis first. Um, I think this is the so biggest. They've been around forever. Okay, first of all, I want to let, let's do the math on how old uh, Nuru is because this is Nuru's thirty thirty five hundredth cycle, three thousand five hundred okay. cycles. Oh. So they said a cycle is several hundred. Several human okay, years. so several hundred human years. So, so let, like let's say let's say three hundred. That's being that several usually <laughs> means three or more. Three hundred is on the low side. 300 times 3,500. A million years old! Nuru's a million years old! <laughs> why are you so old, Nuru? Also, like, why do they help humans? We didn't even exist then. Yeah, what, what were they doing? <laughs> like, yeah, they were just like, hanging like, out, several like, waiting. thousand years. That's about I, it. That's were so they transforming interesting. I think. Dinosaurs? <laughs> right, like, was it like, no, were they from, are they from a different planet? Like, I think that's in yeah, play. What, like, what's the they point? do have interdimensional travel, apparently. Yes, I think <laughs> <laughs> they did. They showed that this episode. Uh, that was, like, shocking. Like, 3,500. Oh, wow, that's pretty old. No, it's several, <laughs> the cycle is several hundred human years. We explicitly say that early in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> we may never get to talk to him again. Like, what? <laughs> You know, this is like a speck on your lifespan. I mean, geez. Uh, t- yeah, t- like, what were you doing before there were people? Yeah, that's a it's a big question now. I think because um, we saw we saw we've saw like shots. Right, are we of... going to get to something where we've enslaved them? Like, I'm not about this. Well, we did talk about uh, <laughs> slaves this episode. So. <laughs> We we we've seen we've seen shots of them throughout human history, ladybugs and cats throughout human history, but maybe yeah. they're alien, ancient alien ladybugs, ancient alien civilizations I'm about or it. something. I'm about it. That's that's yeah. crazy. I think I think that's awesome. Like it's it's like sounds like over the top and stuff, but I think it fits in with the the, the stuff we presented in the show. Um, yeah, Tiki's giving us a lot of uh, Kwame exposition here. It's Nuru's uh, it's Nuru's birthday, and they can communicate on their cycle. Um, and then that's how they're going to find out where Nuru is. So they have to like, gather. Okay. Yeah, they have to gather in the miracle box. So we we, go, we finally get Got more information name. on this miracle thing that box. we keep seeing. It's miracle. the miracle box, and um, we have to, it, it it is apparently like a dimensional portal to their magic world. Is what I took it as. Yeah, um, and they have clocks and paintings. It's basically the inside of a Pokeball, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's just a bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, Master Fu doesn't want them to leave because uh, yeah, they need to stay with their owners. And Pl- Plog's brilliant idea, which we see like illustrated in a different animation format, so good. is uh, Plog and Tiki go into the box while Waze keeps guard. Uh, I, you're, you're a I genius, really Plog. Enjoyed, <laughs> I, wasn't that Tiki's plan? Because yeah. I really enjoyed Tiki's like draw it T- like T- head Tiki, drawing. Tiki out no Tiki outlines it. He, she says it's Plog's idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but I liked um what is it? I liked when the the little drawing of Hawk Moth came out and he goes rar. <laughs> <laughs> it's quality stuff. Rawr. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's how that heart. works. And that uh, Waze looked like um, an alien. So. Waze does look like an alien, though. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's a uh, Delaney. What did you think of all this that we outlined? This this uh, we can communicate with Nuru on the birthdays. Was it convenient, or were you buying in? I mean, obviously, it's convenient. I mean, I don't know. I was buying in because I was just like, "What's going on?" 
And, like, I don't know, I was really excited. I was like, yeah, talk to Nuru. Like, I was getting into it. I was like, rescue Nuru. And obviously it's not happening. But it, I get caught up in it sometimes, even though I know none of these things are going to happen. But um, I really, like, I thought I was buying it. I was, it was really, like, I think it was just well presented. And it was also just like, oh, we're going to this magical world. And I'm like, of course, when you stand back, you're like, what the heck is going on? But while you're watching, you're like, this is so cool. Look at all these commies. They look like bunnies. Like, just <laughs> like, bunnies. <laughs> like a bunny one. And there's like a dog one. And like, yeah, okay, let's let's jump inside the miracle box here because uh, which is cool. Like, let's it was, like, do it. <laughs> I, okay, I know I, we've only ever seen it open, so I wasn't into like when they just went, they're like, we're just gonna go inside the like whatever so, that thing. Does that mean like if the miraculous is like stored within the box, then they're like instantly inside of it? I like, think that's the implication, yeah. And all they can't the, leave it. All these ones are the ones that are stored inside the box, yeah. And I don't know if it's because they need, they're need they like imprisoned there or if they're choosing like for safety, this is like their home um, or it's just like or, tradition. I mean, how I understand it is like they, yeah, I guess it's really confusing because like they're, we know they're in the miraculouses, but then it's also like, well, how are they in this magical world? Because like they had to go into the thing, but the rest of them are just in the box. Yeah, I, I guess they. Help. I guess they can't roam free unless they are a human has a miraculous on. Maybe so they're the not like Pokemon. Well, Got well, it. But it's weird too, though. But it's weird because like maybe like if they're humans wearing the miraculous and they go, they can go do whatever. Yeah. And they can't be called yeah. back. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's enough there that it made sense. It's like the inactive ones that are in the box are inside this world. But yeah, well, let, well, there's some questions on the details, which maybe we'll get into later. Um, but in, inside the Miracle Box, we meet all these new Kwamis. Um, we we have I'm talked so before happy. about how we saw that there were now up to like 19 miraculouses that we saw inside the box, and they were the signs of the zodiac. So there shouldn't be a surprise that we see a bunch of animals in here because they're random zodiac. Uh, each one corresponds to that, and we see all of them. Um, and uh, we see, yeah, we saw the uh, snake one, Sass, uh, is one notable. Also, Best this name. is our <laughs> first introduction to pollen. Um, the uh, you know, the bee, the bee one. Um, that was great. Pollen, oh, that was, yeah, that was solid. Pollen seemed very formal first. So. This is not supposed to be, be like, it's not be supposed like, to be our be introduction like, to Pollen. Chloe. And Chloe's going to be like, yes. Yeah. So we're supposed, I think this episode's supposed to air after the B trilogy. So we should have seen Pollen already, but that's okay. She's, Uh-oh. she seems awesome. Um, and, uh, seems not very Chloe like. Chloe is kind of, um, informal. And, uh, <laughs> Pollen seems very nice and formal here. Um, and, uh, yeah, we see, uh, yeah, Delaney, what was, who was your favorite, uh, Kwame that you saw? Mm, that's tough. Is it the bunny one you talked a lot about? Yes. I mean, I like the bunny one because it was cute. I don't know if there was like a specific. Like, we really don't spend a lot of time with them. Uh, we see them dance. Yeah, we do see them dance. Which I was like, I was not anticipating there to be a party. Like, I was like, what yeah, are they having a party with what was it like an old tape player? Yeah, it was. Good <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just hyped yeah, for pollen. I, don't, I, I don't think I had like a like. I would need more time. There were so many of them. I felt a little overwhelmed. <laughs> well, I was yeah, we, 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 by the Kwamis. We go from like a few, like a handful we've ever seen to like here's twenty more. Like, yeah, I was thing. like, I can't handle this. It's it's like, I'm like, this yeah. is a lot. Yeah, April, uh, your fave is Sass, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you think Sass does? What is uh Do you turn into a snake? Like, uh, is that and that's what, what I can only let see. That's I think that's why Sass is my favorite because I'm super curious to see how. You would transform. It's totally a viper, for the record. Yeah. Viper, so yeah. how how do you look like whenever What's you transform? The power? With that? Yeah. So yeah. Many questions. Um, I just probably like viper strike. He's also he's also kind of got like that. Like I don't want to be like old man attitude, but like like he seems very like wise almost, kind of like ways. And so I'm wondering if he maybe belonged at to like another mm. like master another guardian protect- yeah. yeah another guardian at some point yeah he so. seems like the, he seems like the ways of the kwamis he seems yeah. for sure kind of that but i think he's presented very he's uh, the ways be- of the kwamis because ways isn't a kwami he's, okay he's the, very, the master foo excuse me the master foo of the of the yeah. kwamis yeah um he's, he seems he seems nice though i, I didn't get sinister I, vibes out of him yeah um, i think he just seems sinister because he's a viper so yeah. no he was no, too nice and it made nice, me i was like i'm suspicious nice snake yeah. so is nuru so what does that say about nuru nuru is also a sweetheart in this episode um sad, mm-hmm. sad nuru, nuru is a believable cinnamon roll 
Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, the, it's, um, it's, at the end of the episode, getting ahead for a second because it's relevant here with all the Kwamis, um, Hawk Moth has a very particular line. He says, uh, if I have to fight a whole army of superheroes, I'll do it. Um, getting back to you're last in episode. Love, Hawk Moth. <laughs> I think that's exactly Congratulations. what you're going to have to do. Yeah, getting back to last episode, Hawk Moth's saying, mm, you're getting a lot, a lot of Kwamis, uh, you have a lot of friends, Ladybug. Hmm. Um, so, uh, we see all these miraculouses here. How convenient if we are, uh, foreshadowing a lot of, uh, heroes coming, Delaney. Uh, do you have, since you, you are the one least likely to know what's going to happen, which we do know, uh, what, what's your, what's your theories, uh, surrounding this? Well, there's two things. Like, obviously we're just gonna have a bajillion heroes, but like, so far we've only done it when we need them. Yes. And I'm like, what? Hawk Moth does not succeed. Like, he does not do well. He hasn't got one single miraculous other than his. Like, he hasn't even gotten one earring. Like, I don't know what... He had an earring for, like, two seconds, but he didn't get to keep it. So, like... So, like, I like they're gonna have an arm, but I'm, I don't know what they're gonna fight other than Hawk Moth. Like, are you gonna get a buddy? Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a good question. Are you gonna get a friend? Like, who... Like, Maybe p Unless he akumatizes, like, a million people... <laughs> Which he could. I guess theoretically he could. Like something horrible could happen in Paris. Yeah. What if he <laughs> learns how to akumatize more than one person at yeah. once? Yeah. And something like that could happen. If he, Which if he in that case, slightly competent. Cool. Yeah. yeah. He becomes slightly. Like, that's right. We still have a full kindergarten class, but like you know, it's <laughs> <Okay>. just <laughs> more people. Yeah, you have to imagine we're uh, giving miraculouses to all of Marinette's classmates very soon, and, and we have to anticipate that they and will eventually get to find them more classmates. So. Yeah, because like the thing is, like I think of, so we've seen them and they don't get to keep them, and so eventually something's going to have to happen where we're like, we need we need more of these heroes on call at all times. But then it's like, what's going to happen then? And then what has to happen after that for us to have more? Yeah, I'm. I'm. So basically, the finale is is uh, going to be a lot of the season, which is not too far away. It's going to be a lot of people getting miraculouses. Um, we don't really know the exact details yet. It's Heroes Day. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see if that is an exciting incident for um. Like, what our, is the uh, threat? Like, yeah, well, what's the threat? Like, we know I a little bit know. about that, but we're not 100 percent sure. But like, if if that like I'm not if, very threatened by Hot Pop. How dare you? <laughs> he can accumulate quite a few children. Yeah, um, yeah. So there are a lot of kids individually. Kids. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if like this this incident at the end of the season is what wait, makes wait, wait, like wait, Chloe and Nino and uh, and Alia keep their mar- like. It, it, are they permanent heroes now? So well, wait, we'll see he about that. the twins. Um. Yes, he did akumatize the twins. But he only so. used one butterfly. But it was only one butterfly, so it doesn't count. Interesting. That's fair. Yeah, because everyone knows that when you're a twin, your it's twin the- is. That is how that works. It's the same right. person. Yeah. Okay. Back to the Kwamis. Um, they 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 have their ritual. Uh, they're singing and they're trying to connect with uh, Nuru. Which was um, horrifying. But it was, it was, <laughs> it was not. Horrifying. What you and guys were? It was like beam so... of light, and I'm like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I, I thought the animation and like the sound design on this was incredible. Of like uh, incredibly that... scary. Yes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tiki is the only Kwame I fear. Other than that, they're all very nice. <laughs> so I was okay. not. Horrified. They were all singing. They're all nice Kwame. for like a minute. It was a little scary. By the way, knowing that these Kwamis are like a million okay. years old makes Tiki a lot more scary. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, I, I guess I didn't like. Uh, like, what is it that's necessarily preventing them from talking? Just like talking to Nuru without like less Kwamis. Does that make they, sense? They, they like, needed to be slotted into the the circle, and they needed to power up the. So what will happen if they're all in the circle? What can they do? They're okay. So powerful. it what what happens when it's Tiki's birthday? Like, ha- do they have to do the same thing to talk to Tiki? Like, she's not allowed in the miracle box. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can you be in the miracle box communicating to yourself? I feel like that would defeat the purpose. So these are these are not top of I mind questions, April. This is like if you're or if there, for whatever reason there's a re- like back in the day there was a reason to have to communicate to somebody because they for whatever reason they were far away. So I yeah. this. This like, was a, a million years ago. There weren't cell phones. You can't just call have their owners yeah, exactly. call each other. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they can't even say their owners' names. Yes. Well, right, there has so. to be a reason as to why Tiki they're all like, barked bubbles. <laughs> that was good. 
But I'm like, barf to like, bubbles. What if they're yeah. all there? What do they do? Like, what is the sim? What else, What other light beams can they shoot out of their little? That's box? a good question. This was. This yeah. seemed to be just one function of their singing ritual. Maybe they can do other things. Who knows? Um, but yeah, they 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 come together to sing to try to communicate. Ways joins them. Um, they mentioned not having heard the peacock and yeah, the peafowl. Um, apparently, peafowl. I don't know what that is. It's a peacock. That's right? Adrian's mom. Yeah, well, yeah, we know. Yeah, so, so it's pro- probably. Um, and then the uh, the energy being comes out. They they say they can't uh, communicate with uh, Kwamis when uh, they're in their magic world, right? So we mentioned that. Um, mm-hmm. And then they they connect with Hawk Moth instead of Nuru because Hawk Moth is in uh, Hawk Moth mode. Yes. Um, not, yeah, but he's yeah. talking to them. Yes, because he's. I buy it because he's wearing <laughs> Nuru. Remember, you wear <laughs> I mean, the person. They're <laughs> like one. That? They are one entity at this moment. Yeah, I feel like they could have they could have anticipated this, but they're like, oh, I it's don't because feel he's saying that he's wearing new room. He's wearing they are one Nuru. entity. He's wearing new room. Delaney, 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 this is the premise of the show. Marinette says spots on and she is sort of engulfed by Tiki on her body. <laughs> I don't want to say it. They're, they're it ha- Tiki Delaney, Delaney, it happens now. every episode. It's the I transformation know, it's sequence. Weird. I don't want to say it. <laughs> he is wearing tiki like on her body. Okay, it's so. not enough. Uh, that I just, so I did anything every episode that I also have to deal with this uncomfortable premise of the show. I'm just, I just, I just want to we're not past this at the end of season two. We're not. No, past we're this not. Yet. Oh. Okay. We will never be past it. I, it's hard, hard to Especially yeah, but... now that we know they're like a million years old. Like, yeah, you have this million year old, like little tiny thing, uh, mm-hmm. omni- omniscient, tiny, all powerful being who probably also was worn by aliens a million years ago. Yep. And <laughs> you are not wearing them. Okay. Uh, interest. Yeah, the show's mythology is evolving in an interesting way. Um, but they they're trying. They they talk with Hawkmoth instead, and um, his uh, he like fights back, and his energy beam goes into the 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 miracle box, and it's like got the butterfly symbol. And they're like, his will is strong, and I'm like, oh my god, this is not. There's okay. like fifty of you, like. <laughs> yeah, but then the but the, granted, then they're just like, okay, let's just stop, and then so they just. Cut and then it I off. like that they do like the swiper no swiping kind of move, like they just put no, their arms out just- like. Take no. their arms out, and they're like, mm. "No." So they're like, "Girl, bye." That's what they say. Yes. Yeah, um, by Hawk Moth. And uh, he, uh, yeah, and then they uh, can't get, the, yeah, they say they're, they realize can't get to New York because he's uh, powering Hawk Moth. Um, but there's a consequence because Hawk Moth is able to vaguely pin their location. But uh, they weren't able to do the same to him. Like, that's kind of upsetting. So I guess it's because he successfully reversed it on them, and then they cut it out, they cut it off before they reversed it back. Like, if they reversed it back on him, maybe they could have gotten it. But, but like, it, wouldn't they it, have it's, been it's able like, to? It's like Hawk Moth began to triangulate their location, <laughs> but then they hung up before oh, they yeah, could get because, the full triangulation. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's exactly like that. That's, ex- that's definitely what they were thinking. Um, he gets, he feels on the right. And no bank. one anticipated this happening. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. These these million year old Qua- uh, Kwamis are just very stupid. I guess. Um, which we've granted, we know but, because plug. Uh, okay, so there's so much that I have so many questions. <laughs> Look, we can't answer all these questions, <laughs> April. <laughs> we can, there's, we have no answers. Okay, we I just we can just okay, tell you. Let's let's just move on then. <laughs> okay, but he felt them a right bank of the the same same river. Um. So, uh, and then he tries to send Sandboy there. Um. Yep. And uh, so this I feel like this is a consequence. He kind of knows what neighborhood Master Fu lives in. <laughs> so Master I think Fu needs to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Just get out of there. Uh, definitely not moving. Just break though. your lease. Um. <laughs> yeah, I I want I think I wonder if this this is like the in, the uh the beginning of the finale is Hawkmoth's like I finally found him and he like uh, converges on Master <gasps> Fu or something. Oh no! Not okay, leave that old man alone. Yes, please. Even though even though Master Fu has been in uh Gabriel's house as we saw. Yeah. In the oh my episode. god! I can I just my soul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Okay, so and then yeah, so that's that's all most of the Kwame stuff. Again, another uh, keeping with this Kwame theme because we say we we've referenced this Tiki and Plog scene of them going to Master Fu's uh, residence. Um, we Sugar see, Cube, Sugar Cube. We see their dynamic, and uh, Plog calls Tiki Sugar Cube, and Tiki does not want does not want the, uh, him calling I told her you that. Not to call me that. Yeah, you want? I don't call you Stinky Sock, do I? And then he says, "I wish you would." <laughs> 
Which is, is even better the worst. I the hate you. Out. Plot, here, here's the. I was very confused by this quote from Plod. I was so ing- I was so grossed out by your kindness that it made me really hungry. Love That's it. what Plog it says. It's because it's Plog. Yeah, does Plog just not get emotions? Hungry. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> Plog is just always hungry, and that's his only emotion. Well, I guess that's the guy. Years old. He has yeah. yet to grasp the concept of human emotion. They're all children. <laughs> Million year old babies. Yeah, but Plog, and then Plog starts crying because he's moved. He cries at another point too. So I feel like we're trying to humanize Plog here that he actually does feel for the situation. Um, yeah, he, he feels for Nuru. Whoa, what if Plog and Nuru is a thing? <gasps> ship it <laughs> ship it <laughs> immediately i ship it are we shipping t the real question though delaney oh is, god are no. we shipping no. tiki no. and plog no. no why no why do you plog hate no. better. do you hate these weird old children's love is do you do you hate that no yes i do hate it <laughs> We've asked. I'm pretty sure I've asked you this question before. You have. Know. You absolutely have. And I'm like, no. <laughs> April, please tell me you're shipping Tiki and Plog. Of course, you have to. Is that sincere? Yes. No. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> because <laughs> if look, if Plog and, and Tiki head, get together, solid. then <laughs> I mean, just a little bit because. Well, but anyway, um, yes, because that brings us closer to Ladybug and Cat getting together. So, is it a package deal? Do we have yes. to get these two together? Okay, Beth? so like they can't say their name, but then as soon as they get out, Tiki's because they like, know they know who they are, right, but they can't right, say right. the name. Right. right. So they can't. We learn that they can't say their owners' names, but then uh, Tiki recognizes Adrian because in Dark Owl we saw them see each other uh, detransformed. Yep. Yeah. So I I thought that that was of, an awesome moment. We saw. I was like, going to say I loved all season. of the nods to like previous episodes where like big things happened. Yes. Like it was this episode, this episode feels of like it feels like it's at the end of season two. Like yeah. this is huge. Yes. It's, yeah. Like I, I feel I feel like this episode was probably like an episode just before the finale. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be yeah. right around the end. Yeah. <sighs> um, I mean, we're we're at the end regardless. We just haven't seen the B arc, which is supposed to be earlier. Um, but uh, I also, I, in general, I also think the end of the season, we've gotten a few end of season episodes now. I think it's really felt more consequential than earlier in the season. So I really like how we've ramped up. Um, like, yeah. like, like even dumps, even a uh, space dumpster episode felt like big in a wacky way, you know, like we've yeah. gone, you know, we, we're, we're going uh, bigger here and, and all these, and like we're, no, we're going to get, uh, I mean, we went to space. To <laughs> you can't get much bigger than dumpsters places. in space. Yeah. <laughs> so if 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 the Kwamis were from space originally, would they have ran into the space dumpsters on their yes. way to Earth? Are the and space dumpsters older than humans themselves? Have, have we always just yes. had space dumpsters? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah. The, the Kwamis TV- were actually super pumped to find out that they were putting space dumpsters back in back, orbit, back where they belong. Yeah. And- <laughs> And then they were very upset when they found out that they took them out of space. As, as we all were. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, the last thing with Tiki and Plug, as mentioned, they, they mirror the ladybug and cat dynamic um, with uh, Bugaboo and Sugar Cube, right? Um, and uh, it, it's, I, I really love this parallel. It's pretty basic, but um, I think it does a lot for Tiki and Plug's character. I love the theory that wearing them like rubs off on them. Like, and, you're and, welcome. And so Lady Noir <laughs> is like influenced by <laughs> by Tiki and Plug. Wow, what if it's true? Um, but yeah, I'm I thought excited. I thought that was great. This is. I also think this is like the best Plog episode too. Honestly, like just, I said, it's the best Tiki episode earlier. Plog gets this action piece when he's flying back from. Um, I guess they fly. I don't know, floating. Um, back from the uh, Master Fu's floating. house and uh, <laughs> battling. He's like battling against uh, Sandboy. Like evades him. He says his nightmare is dairy free cheese. That's what he says. You'll never get him to eat it. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> And I, and I appreciated like the evasive maneuvers into the subway. Yeah, um, he's pretty smart here. Yeah, dang I, it, Plog. <laughs> fan, fan, fantastic Tiki and Blog episode, honestly. Um, okay, other 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 stuff from the episode. For, by the way, first of all, we we open. You know, it's going to be a good episode because we open on Marinette watching a, a TV broadcast that features new cat memes featuring Cat Noir. Best. Yeah, that was good. That's the best. <laughs> Well, this the show has now said memes, so therefore we have come full circle because the show is essentially a meme. Yes. Yes. But okay. It, we're, <laughs> this is perfect. It was the perfect opening. It was like <laughs> it was an opening of good good things to come here. Yeah. 
yeah. that's how I knew this episode was going to be great. I was other, like, oh, the, yeah, the other great thing Plog does, by the way, he go, he he goes to bed and he leaves this cardboard cutout of himself. <laughs> to, no, and it was a sock. <laughs> his sock cut out of fly in order to fool Adrian. And then what is it? He has a moment, and Adrian yells, "Who turned you into a sock?" <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, honey, <laughs> it's I'm like, like oh, I'm like you are so baby. pure and stupid. <laughs> it's, it's great. Plag is yeah. Plag, 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 Plag is so good here. Like we usually we're not thrilled with Plag and his cheese memes, but um, he he had a lot of uh, good things here. This 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 uh this sock ver- prison escape version of him was really good. <laughs> and his moment with Adrian at the end, I think, is great. Adrian's like, oh, yeah, you can. Just do whatever you do, whatever you want. I understand what it's like to have freedom restricted. Yeah. And then uh, they're like, oh, I love you. No, but he's like, you're the best cat ever. But they, since they've been, I don't buy both of them saying that Marinette and Adrian are their best uh, versions of cat. I don't buy that either. It's a million years old. You've had a lot of. I feel like l- they're like, whatever Tiki said it to the other Kwamis, I, I was like, you're just showing off because you get to be outside the box and they're all stuck in there. Yeah, isn't, or, she, isn't that pretty mean bragging about yes. how not only am I free, but I have the best own, yeah, the best ladybug ever. Yeah, it's kind of wow, tiki. Yep. Um okay. How about Hawk Moth? We get this Hawk Moth scene as mentioned. Um Nuru's trying to leave. We learn Hawk Moth's rules for Nuru. Number one, Nuru cannot be more than a few feet away from Hawk Moth. And two, no communicating with anyone besides Hawk Moth. Okay, so the like distance away thing, I I don't know cuz I had a like I kind of questioned that one specifically because like Tiki says that Master Fu doesn't like them to be too far away from like their um whatever, like owner. And so uh, I thought that was like a really interesting that like Tiki said that about Marinette and then like Hawk Moth spouted it back to Nuru. Does that make sense? Interesting. Kind of. Okay. So you're, so you're seeing some parallels between Master Fu being controlling uh, like like Akmoth a little bit. Well, I think it's, I almost, I don't want to call it like controlling because I understand like why Master Fu, I guess, kind of has that. Or like, may, maybe you're saying Hawk Moth's uh, rule like, is just a, is just a sub, yeah, it's just a yeah. subversion of an established Kwame rule. Yes. Okay. That's, that's interesting. I was taking it as. And I yeah. was just like, Hawk Moth, that's rude. Like you suck. You're taking advantage. <laughs> Very, very abusive, uh, yeah, relationship. Yes, and Nuru, Nuru deserves better. Nuru does, deserves Nuru better. does deserve better. Also, Nuru's Hashtag like- Hashtag save Nuru. Not, not just mm-hmm. abusive relationship. Nuru's just a slave, but yeah. It's, that's uh, true. Yeah, for, free, hashtag free Nuru. Um, and Nuru x plug. That's that's really what we're what we're going Nuru for. Here. X-plog, plog yeah, X-tiki. and then uh, you put the plug x tiki. Wow, love triangle. Wow, <gasps> love Kwame triangle. Perfect. <laughs> we gotta get that uh get sass involved too <laughs> <laughs> who's sass into and okay. pollen <laughs> pollen yeah pollen no pollen's too precious i'm our, we've only seen pollen for like a half second but what's uh what's alia's kwami i i don't remember we the, the, she was there um, pollen x uh fox alia yeah, yeah. <laughs> all yeah that's, it's a good chip um, it's, it feels like a long time ago, really, because it was many months ago. That's it why it feels so like a long, long time ago. ago. Um, yeah, Hawkmoth does the thing where he silences Nuru. Um, then he's like, "Nah, just kidding. You can." You that can was talk. not a joke. <laughs> I was so upset. <laughs> I was like, "Just kidding. This this isn't funny." <laughs> it's pretty pretty evil, but um, I guess it's better than actually silencing Nuru. Um, yeah, this is not, not a good look for Akma. Yeah, his necklace lights up and he's, he can, we see him like zen out and like can sense, um, like the, the strife out there. So I thought that was a really great expansion of the Hawkmoth mythology. Like, and then I said we didn't get a Hawkmoth transformation sequence. Yeah, I really would have loved a transformation sequence after that. Um, cause we've seen it before him transforming. Yeah. And I think that would have, it would have like, I would not have complained about that transformation. The one tra- yeah, I usually don't like the transformation. There's the, the worst part of the episode is the transformation sequence. I'll get to that later, but um, it's it's. I think it would have fit here, but I also think the juxtaposition of change of plans into right to smash cut into the to the shot we always see of the te- of the opening up of the 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 shutters. Um, I think that really works too. It's like we saw yeah. the Gabriel perspective. Now we go into the typical Hawk Moth perspective we've seen. 
Um, just because we've seen that shot so many times and like we see the before, like we actually saw the before for once and how he senses the Kwame or how he senses. It's like the, a, uh, it's like the, yeah. a different take on the before. Like, yeah, yeah. Which and you already kind of mentioned, but, but it's also like, it's like, oh, we didn't get to see like the person who was akumatized first, but we got to see like his side of it, which I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, the, normally we see the perspective of the akumatized. Here we saw the perspective of the akumatizi. Akumatizi. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Hothmoth, yeah. So also, I, I, any any more Hothmoth time is good time. Uh, so. It's all good time. He also had this quote, I feel an emotion of great intensity. So yeah, pure. Yeah, I was like, why are you like this? As soon as so he, pure. As soon as he said pure, I was like, it's another kid. I already know. <laughs> well, like, just I statistically, it could, could just be already likely to be another kid i want to i want to take this quote so pure whenever uh we have something that we're actually think is pure so pure talk about saying it okay we can uh we've saw the the kwami stuff um okay so all this nightmare stuff now um we have marinette first of all marinette's dreaming of adrian with three kids and And they have a a cat no a a hamster not a cat what april what do you think of this dream marinette was having um, I thought it was hilarious that she was like, no, not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and Rest then she goes cat. for a hamster. <laughs> much, much better. <laughs> rather, rather have the hamster, yeah. Would, um, would she have named the cat uh, Chat or Noir? Would it have been a black cat? <laughs> definitely would have been a black cat. And that's okay. why, and in her head, and that's why she said no <laughs> to, to it. <laughs> She's like, oh no, my feelings for Chat Noir are coming into the stream and that's not okay yeah not a, yeah it's very very symbolic and then we speak for the first time the zombie adrian who loves chloe <laughs> and is uh, to- zombie adrian is the best <laughs> delaney do you want do, would you take zombie adrian or normal adrian i mean definitely normal adrian the zombie adrian like I, he doesn't blink yeah, well, did you, you felt felt very much like felt like a horror movie zombie. Where it was so, t- and he was just like twisting his head. Yeah, and it's just like dear. And I know everyone's like none of the characters blink, but like there was something in his eyeballs, man. It was just scary. Yeah, I love I love him uh, talking about Chloe all the time. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Like it was just so unnecessary. It, it was so great. I'm gonna get you flowers. They're gonna be what did he say? Hortensias, yeah, Hortensia. roses, <laughs> and Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line, yeah. Chloe is. Yeah, We're gonna is, get a that was the best. David Marinette. <laughs> yeah, Nightmare Adrian has a house with Chloe and a hamster named Marinette. Yeah, that was. That was. Uh, yeah, it's all all the nightmares. That that's Marinette's worst nightmare. Adrian's. Um, Adrian. Oh, we see uh, Marinette's dad uh, with the talking doe. By the that way, that was good. Also, really scary. Oh my god, do not want that. I'm glad that was not the whole episode. <laughs> that that was scary. I felt like that was uh, one of the least scary. I guess. Oh, I feel no, like no, a... it was scary. There were no eyes. It was terrifying. Okay, <laughs> we're seeing a thing. It's scary. Ooh, weird eyes. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Adrian in these increasing levels of cages, um, bars in his room. Very literal. I just uncalled for. I was like, leave him alone. Let yeah, him go. Free this Adrian. is this is the most uh, literal we've gotten with this uh, common, very, very, very common theme of Adrian um, just not a, craving freedom. And that's why he expresses himself over the top as cat. Um, I think it's, you know, we've seen this a, a bunch and I'm, you know, I think we've gotten there already. But I think this is the, the best we've presented it ever. Um, the clearest we, we've gotten it um, via his nightmare form. Um uh yeah, who who turned Plog into a sock? That was also there. And then we talked about uh, Master Fu's uh, ghost uh, nightmare, the Order of the Guardians of the Miraculous. And they were sheets. <laughs> yeah, really not. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, yeah, I, I expected that to be a big mythology moment, but yeah, it was uh, these uh, <laughs> cute ghost sheet things. And again, um, we come full circle <laughs> in our yes. meme of this show. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think we can re- truly come full circle unless there are space dumpsters involved <gasps> in More space the proceedings. Um, Sandboy, uh, yeah, he, J- Sandboy just checked in. Now nightmares can begin. Okay, he says that a lot. And then yep. um, he's on this this cloud pillow and uh, the nightmare sands, and he brings nightmares to life. I, I pretty, I think it's a pretty cool villain concept. I thought so too. Yeah, I liked and- it. Yeah, Delaney, you said you liked his design and stuff. Um, you know, I really liked his design, and I did. It was kind of like. I really like when he started like throwing like the rainbow dust. So that was pretty cool. But no, overall, like I just like this character design and like 
Yeah, do, I didn't do you know think, it was a pillow until they said it was a pillow. But I was yeah, like, it's it's fine. yeah, clear. Do you think? Do you think uh, Sandboy is successful in spite of us not seeing his origins? Do you think that was okay? I think so. I mean, it was a very simple villain. Like it was like it wasn't that complicated, and it was very easy to understand. Though at first I was a little confused because I thought you had to be asleep because Marinette was asleep. But uh, then it was just like, oh no, they'll just like torture you. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's kind of unclear whether they're like awake or asleep or if the zombie Adrian's like real or just a projection. But yeah, Yeah. eventually it's like clear. Yeah, I agree. Like, just do this for the simple concept, villain concepts. Just don't you don't need to show us the origins like this was completely fine. And it doesn't have to be like super over the top either. Like this one was so like, again, to quote Hawkmoth, this one was so pure. uh, (laughs) Like, I think. That, uh, well, I think it found, like, a lot of its success in that. Like, we've had villains before where they're they're just sort of complicated. And it's like, how how did we... And even with, like, I guess their origin story, it's how did we get from, like, this to this kind of thing? So I liked... I think that it was really successful, the fact that it was so simple. Especially because there was so much else going on within the episode. Like, with all the Kwamis and all the Hawk Moth and everything. All like the Hawk Moth, most importantly. I think, yeah, I think it left a lot of time for other really interesting things. Um, yeah, we, we talked about the uh, Tiki recognizing Adrian. Um, so, oh, the, okay, the worst part of the episode, unfortunately, was we have an Adrian transformation sequence directly into him doing Cataclysm, like, back-to-back. Oh um, yeah, he yeah. wasted that. <laughs> well, he had to get out Real of the. He had to get out of the cages. I think like that was step one. He was, he, the as we saw with um, Zombie Adrian, that's real. It was real. It wasn't projection. So he had to, he yeah. had to break out. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't like the two transformation sequences into each other. I mean, I guess I don't blame the show because it's taken this long to to finish the episodes. <laughs> but um, so don't uh, uh, Mysticons did this like once, and I wasn't crazy about it. like don't combine the the reused animation. Like it's already barely palatable on its own in the show. Like every single episode. Um, but it's, it's, it was acceptable because we went immediately into great stuff, like right after. Um, we don't, okay, a lot of, um, good or bad, depending on your perspective, cat quotes in this episode. Um, t- t- uh, April, tell me whether you were buying into, uh, the, the following lines from Cat. Um, he says, Milady, tonight's been a total nightmare until you showed up. Uh, no, you're not. But you were. You were not impressed by this line. No, but go on. Keep going. <laughs> okay, here's the next one, uh, Ladybug. Uh, ladybug, your nightmare. Oh, this was Hawkmoth. Okay, this is not a. This is not a. <laughs> Here's okay. This it, I I wrote it down as if it was like an a, a, a cat love line because I love Hawkmoth so much. So this was um this was Hawkmoth said, Ladybug, your your nightmare is my dream come true. I but- died. <laughs> so it's a. I feel like that's a similar oh, level to the to the cat line. No, it was exactly like like it was exactly the same line, and I was like, "This is great! Like you stole that from Cat Noir." Yeah, he's been learning. Yeah, and it's, stop it's trying good. to woo Ladybug Cockmoth. That's not cool. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Total. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight's been a total nightmare until you shut up. Yeah, we're very literal with a lot of these lines, but I think they work. Um, yeah, we're fighting. We're fighting Sandboy. Um, we talked. I talked about the lucky charm. Marinette's interrupted with her lucky charm. She doesn't have powers. Um, Cat saves Ladybug from. Uh, she's falling. Uh, he catches her, and then um, he's the he like carries her bridal style too on top of the the rooftop. That was beautiful. And uh, they also um, they also like roll on top of each other at one point. Um, yes. This, in addition to the pivotal scene, we can skip skip ahead to the scene um, at the end. Uh, Ladybug says, "Cat Noir, you don't really think I'm as evil as your night as your nightmare, do you?" And uh, he says, "Of course I don't. You're the lady of my dreams." And then blows her a kiss, and then she smiles. She loves him. <gasps> that's new. That's new. If that's true, big. If true, <laughs> big. If Vague, true. but so true. Huge did you? If true, Delaney. Yeah. Did you? Did you like the scene? We're skeptical sometimes of the this pairing. I mean, I, I liked it. Like, I thought it was it was okay. Like, it wasn't one of it. You kind of get one. You kind of get used to it. Like the like the overbearingness of it all. But I do think I do think it this was cute. Like it was it was cute. I think the music that played behind the scene was fantastic. 
Um, the show oh, so noticed kind of like a more vulnerable episode. Like they were both very vulnerable in this episode. Yeah, yeah, like- back, yeah, back to that in a second. That the show, as as mentioned in the previous podcast, the show's definitely gotten new music recently. Like we yes. definitely like got the oh, got the new tracks. Yes, in. and this 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 scene in particular really enhanced by the the track band. I think it was fantastic. Vulnerability. Uh, this, this episode is really Ladybug, uh, Marinette as Ladybug at her most vulnerable. She does not have her powers and Kat is fighting for her and Kat is acting as a protector. I kind um, of loved it. Like, <laughs> I, like I always love like having like a strong female like character, especially like if the lead is that, but I kind of enjoyed like her having to almost kind of like rely on him and I guess use him to accomplish what they needed to accomplish. Like I really liked it. Same with the what is the episode whenever like they're um like connected and they have to like be in sync and everything. Um I liked it for that. Like I like seeing them like work together so well. Nice. Yeah, Delaney, we we uh, oftentimes don't love the ladybug cat dynamic as much when um you know ladybug is less uh, is less in charge, has less power right. happening. And this was the the biggest um the biggest manifestation of that, she literally doesn't have her powers. I will Kat say, like, I didn't but, like where, like, there were several points in the episode where he was carrying her. Yeah. Did, did, overall, did you, did you not like it or, or just, uh, so, so a few points? It was really just a few points. It was like, there was that moment when, like, he, they focus on her, him grabbing her waist and he goes up so that they could, like, crash into each other, like the lady, the evil ladybug and sandboy. Yeah. And that was I think that was a good scene. Like it was it was very dramatic and, you know, you felt it. Um, th- but there was several moments of like kind of the constant running around and he was just carrying her, which I didn't really like. But it was also like it wasn't so much like I don't think it was like meant to be like, I don't think it was like I don't think it was necessarily in poor taste because she literally carries him around all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the yeah. We, we get that dynamic. More that. It wasn't that bad. Um, and. I, we have we have had other episodes where they have to work together like this. They have to depend on each other, and I think this like like that's a little bit better. When I really meant the vulnerability was really kind of more the emotional vulnerability. Uh, was when uh like when you see Cat's nightmare, and like Laybook just kind of gives him this look, and like she really feels bad for him. And then of course at the end when she's like, Do you, I hope you like you know that's not really what it's like. And, but, um, I think it was mainly, like, the, him carrying her, though she was obviously in charge, like, the whole time. And it's a good point about, um, Ladybug, like, feeling, like, maybe feeling bad about how she normally is, uh, yeah. is, is, gives, gives him a lot of crap. Um, and, Which like, that. it's different, too, because there's still that she doesn't really believe him, because he's so overbearing about it. And I think it's easy for her to just, like, kind of brush him off, and then maybe not realizing that, like, it really is, like, he does actually, like, love her. Yeah, and I think I think this was like, like this is like proof to her that yeah. um like that she means so much to him that is like a, her right. literal nightmare is her, is him not like is him being against her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I think like I I really did like the the ladybug powerless dynamic that we had and I didn't think that I if you described this concept to me beforehand I would have been kind of grossed out by it. Um, but I think the episode presents it so well. I think it's like what Delaney said. There's no like ulterior motivations. It's coming from a place of, emo- of like vulner, of character growth and vulnerability and like this nightmare concept getting into character, um, development. Um, and, uh, like it's, it's like for a specific purpose that like this, it makes sense. Ladybug not having your powers versus cat that not being, um, like some, some of his nightmare and that, and it's, it's quick. Um, like I, I, I even was into the, the bridal carry on the rooftop and it immediate, most importantly, it immediately leads into one of my favorite Marinette as ladybug scenes ever with her piecing together, um, how to solve it without the use of the lucky charm. So like Marinette, even without her powers still is the one to save the day in the end. Um, cat has his powers still like, you know, it's still like Marinette who's doing it. And, uh, it's, it's, it's given like a proper due. Um, so I think it's like fairly fantastic just because it still goes into a great place for Marinette's character. Um, agreed. Yeah. And get, getting to that a little bit. Um, let me, let me very briefly try to explain what's happening here with the, <laughs> with the lucky charm, because I thought this was very confusing as are as to be fair, are a lot of lucky charms. Um, there's a, not a lucky charm. She's just using ma- her ladybug vision as a representation of her thought process. So she lures the evil ladybug, by the way. Yes. Adrian's biggest fear is a uh, evil ladybug with a giant sword who lucky charms the sword, which is the greatest. And doesn't ever. love him and calls him kitty too much. Yeah, <laughs> very many cat puns a lot. 
Yeah, it's it's good. Um, so yeah, she lures him. Uh, he she lures evil ladybug over. Um, it's like he she swings the sword, and the top of the sword comes off it because it's obviously off. a terrible rip off Halloween toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just it's yeah, it's the one of the ladybug Burger King toys, and it. I like it how comes she's off. so smart. Marinette is so smart that she looks at it and she's like, "That is the weakness. This sword would not pass forged in fire. That is, I would, I would not thought of that. Yeah, this sword would not would not pass the rigorous testing done in forged in fire. It would break on the coconuts. She just saw that. It was like, yeah, it's really, it's very, it's just one of her most impressive thought processes because it's so complicated. And she so they run off as, and it's not so complicated that you're like, this is stupid. Like when it was the racist chef. (laughs) <laughs> okay okay let's not get okay don't bring that up that that's, one, that's that our one darkest was way time more complicated than this one well, yeah we've had a, we've had a few a few other ones but i i had to go back and watch this a few times but then so she break the sword top off they she, the, the la- evil ladybug stuck she races she picks up the uh the pe- the top of the sword cat launches them at sandboy and she uses the top of the sword to slash the pillow it's so she breaks off the top of the sword to have a thing to slash the pillow with um, definitely did not get that immediately. I'm not crazy about these really complicated ones that are kind of hard to understand. Um, but, uh, this one at least came together when you went back a few times. Well, I um, got it. Well, like I was confused when she was like looking and it was just the tip of the sword. And I was like, what? But then when she did it, I was like, oh, I got it. Okay. Like it made okay, sense cool. as soon as like it was put into motion. I was like, right. oh, okay. Yeah, well, I when, understand well, what we're when doing the, now. Okay, well, when she's looking, it never makes sense. That's, that's, oh, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's true. You're like, what? Well, Let's that was the first time I was like, well, there's a lot of times when she's looking, I'm like, I don't even know what you're looking at. Like, what is that? I don't know. Okay, we've got a stop sign. <laughs> Look over there. Is that a bracelet? Okay, we can use that. Yeah, yeah. like, what's that? What are you even looking at? Ooh, a dime on the ground. Perfect. Like, perfect. perfect. <laughs> That's li- yeah, literally what this is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then she throws the top of the sword up at the end, as I mentioned earlier. Even though it wasn't either, even though it wasn't a lucky charm object, or it was because evil ladybug lucky charm. But yeah, We're, uh, unclear. And then One Hawkman's day like, she no, will throw the cat into the air and go miraculously. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what if? I need about it. Oh, I need I need that now. <laughs> She just chucks him up and does fly. And Cat's like, woo! Wait, and then and then since it resets, it turns him back into Adrian, and that's how she discovers who he I is. Say, I yes. will say, yes. thing, I think the best thing that happened in this episode is when she grabs him by, like, not... Usually she just grabs him, like, by the tail. She yeah. grabs him at the base of his tail and just rips him back. <laughs> Come on! Rip. Rip Cat. Come okay. over here. Yeah, just like, we- and she just bodily moves him. It's so, like, she can just throw you. Says, don't worry about it because you weigh yeah. two pounds yeah and uh the yeah the the miraculous ladybug and gets her powers back so then she can devilize it always feels weird when we do the uh lady miraculous ladybug into the de- devilize um it's very but weird. we've done we've done it a few times oh, this when season, we do, but. i always forget order. when it happens like i'm like what are we not going to do it but yeah it's like oh we've yeah. done or sometimes no, we're just gonna let that one go right. guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> this, this yeah this this butterfly can, it's fine <laughs> this one's okay. you know, there's sometimes uh, there's such a long gap that you're like are you gonna do it i'm concerned yeah. i did i had i had a moment as well i was like wait hold on there's still a butterfly flying around also props to that butterfly for not just flying off and being like okay guys i'm gonna go acclimatize someone else <laughs> yeah it, it's 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 stayed calm the but it's not the butterfly's fault it's, i know they're, they're chill they don't don't play them just bit. another slave of hawk moth hawk moth hawk moth back to him in a second but um yeah everyone's apologizing to master fu um uh, marinette and tiki have their moment she like kisses tiki i think and then hugs her Creepy. um and then adrian and plog have their their that, that well, was Plog's actually, like i'm so tough this isn't my fault and then as soon as he leaves he's like oh my god adrian i love you so much yeah. <laughs> just trying to show off for tiki plog because you mm-hmm. love Tiki, uh, the OTP. Um, as, yeah, Hawkmoth at the end, he knows they're close and there are many of them, referring to the yes. commies. Please yes, chill out. Hawk- yes, Hawkmoth. Hawkmoth, Hawk- <laughs> you're so... Hawkmoth, you're have- so close to being not garbage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, April, you immediately yes. Hawkmoth he is, whenever he is always going to be a flame... He's gonna, always going to be a flaming space dumpster, always. Wow, oh. that's that's the biggest compliment I think you give him. Uh, I think yeah, that's, that's our highest. That's our highest honor. Is the space dumpster uh, d- 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 distinction? Um, yeah, he wants to take. He wants to take. He wants. He wants all the the Kwame so he can take all of them and have all of their powers. Just so he can get this. Okay, here's the problem with his plan because he's like, 
once he's I get all of the, well, no, it's not even that. He's like, once I get all the Kwamis, then I'll easily be able to get Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculouses. And I'm like, I feel like you're taking a step backwards there, buddy. Like, I mean, maybe, but no, because can they? Can a person have more than one Kwame attached? Un- unclear. To them? Unclear. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, I was like, why? Why is it easier to get the t- the twenty Kwamis than get the two, two ones you haven't gotten? Why? Yeah. What? What makes you think that you can actually get all of these yeah. despite spending several years trying to get uh, these two specific ones and failing several times? But these thirteen year olds, which you cannot defeat as a grown man, like uh, I'm not liking your chances <laughs> here, Akma. <laughs> But no, like, really, though, it was like, it's like taking a step back, because he's like, once I get all of these, then I'll be able to get them. And I'm like, no, why don't you just, like, keep keep the course, Hawk Moth? Just stay stay where you are. You've actually like, gotten kind of close, and it hasn't ended in disaster. You, you haven't gotten your own missile defenses turned on you in a, in a few weeks. So that's just, true. Just, just to stay the course, Hawk Moth, we'll get there eventually. But at the end, he says, Mwah, like, he gives his, <laughs> his best evil laugh after doing no earlier. I know um, the no earlier. That was your fave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause it's like, it was well the part, the reason why it was like my favorite is because it was very like instant too. Like you see like him fail and then immediately it's just him going, no. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don't relish in our favorites pain. April. He was, he was trying so hard. He's like doing a good job. He's a good boy. <laughs> good boy. He's, he's not a good boy, but he's a good boy. <laughs> la, la, last thing I'd run down. We, we mentioned this briefly, but uh, April mentioned this. Different, uh, Ladybug and uh, Marinette and then Cat and Adrian have different nightmares each presented. Um, kind of further distinguishes them as like different characters in the show. Um, but like it, it shows that like when they're their hero selves, they have different mindsets kind of. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they're getting at so that they have different uh, fears and like hopes and stuff. So I thought that was that was really interesting too. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. W- went long enough, Delaney. <laughs> what are your? <laughs> what do we? We talked about it all. What are your final thoughts on Sandboy? I really enjoyed the episode, and I do think I, I'm. I'm not still convinced that it's like the best episode, but I. Re- I did really enjoy it, and I think it was a great example of like of season two and. Where we- and yeah. Hopefully, where we're going. Uh, seeing all the Kwamis was cool and overwhelming, and I guess we're gonna see them all again. And oh my god, when the army of superheroes is gonna happen, I'm just gonna be like, dear God, but. It's like we're getting places. We're kind of having plot movement. And it was overall, it was just a fun episode. Like it was a good, like we had a good villain. Like we had like Tiki and Plog out doing stuff by themselves. We even had a Plog action sequence. Like I think this was, this was really, it was a really special episode and I really enjoyed it. Nice. April, final thoughts. Um, I, I'm totally with you that this is like one of the best episodes because we had a lot of, um, like we got, I mean, even though they gave us a lot of the, the same old stuff, that we already kind of knew. Like, we still got more information. Um, anytime that the show changes up, like, the format of the episode, it's always really successful. And, like, we always enjoy it. And they pull it off, like, so well. So um, I'm sad that we got this episode out of order. But I, I, I still really, really enjoy it. And if it's meant to be, like, right before the, like, season finale episodes, like, it's perfect. Very, uh, very hype. Right yeah. The finale. Yeah. Um, yeah. Best, maybe the best episode of the show. Fight me. Uh, well, space haters. dumpsters. Haters. Yeah. Space, space, dollars, space dumpsters. There's so many, Nothing's there as good as so space many dumpsters. ladybug haters. Yeah. <laughs> fight, fight me haters. Okay. It was great. <laughs> Sandboy. Yeah. So, so fantastic. Let us know what you thought of Sandboy overlyanimated.com or youtube.com slash overly animated. We'll be back to discuss the next episode of Ladybug. I could talk for 10 minutes about when or where the next episode might air because there's been a lot of movements on this front. <laughs> um, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to say we'll probably get an episode in early October. It could air in one of four countries. <gasps> it could be one of four episodes. Um, Let, can we take bets? <laughs> no, we don't have time for that, but uh, we could do that on our <laughs> We used to our play Discord. that game. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah we, did, we did do that. Discord, uh, talk, uh, speculate on our Discord about that, overlyanimated.com slash Discord. But um, originally, it might look like we were getting the third part of the B-trilogy before the parts one Jesus. and two, and it was a disaster. So Th- Th- Thomas, Thomas literally tweeted, don't watch it if it airs. It, it's out of order. Like, <laughs> if it's out of order, it was, oh my God, the biggest uh, crap show. Like, uh, But it, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Like, it seems like that's, it seems like we'll actually not have that. 
lab. So someone whenever, somewhere called somebody and was like, please, dear God, yeah, don't do this. I think what probably is wrong we're with saying, you? Yeah. So probably next we'll either get the first two parts of the B trilogy or Frozer or something. So either way, very hyped. For those spoilers. A, there's a promo for Frozer out that's really spoiler. You don't look at it. I and, don't watch um, it. Stellini is yeah, pure. Yeah, that, I like started to watch it and then I was like, wait, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> it was immediately you were already ruined, so too late. Um, yeah, okay, so whenever it'll be, whenever it comes out, it'll, we'll be talking about it at overlyanimated.com. Support us via Patreon, patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thank you very much to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Kent, aka Kent Brockman, and thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Hugh. Um, yeah, check a bunch of other stuff uh, at overlyanimated.com. Check all that out there. And uh, yeah, I'll be back for more Ladybug when the next episode airs. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.